All right, y'all. So we are going to be here today doing another little bit of a special video. We are going to be doing a world's recap, so to speak, with our good friend Olivia Maledsky, who recently competed at her first uh, Worlds. So Olivia, if you do not know, is a Canadian player also is a what's the word um member of the dark aura esports group so uh and and i just think it's been really cool to see olivia's growth over this year and you know becoming such a uh you know force in in some of these tournaments and ultimately ending up being able to make worlds this year so you know we just love seeing our friends make that progress and uh so we want to be able to recognize them and give them a chance to talk a little bit about how their journey has been this year so first and foremost uh let's just welcome olivia uh she does not have a camera but that's okay we have this beautiful picture of her down in the uh in the corner under me from uh, this picture was taken at Worlds. Who were you facing, you said? Oh, this was during, uh, Fort Wayne. This oh. This was probably the picture <laughs> of me that I have. I'm not very photogenic. Uh, it's all good. I like it. It's a good photo. It it's, awesome. it's the GG's photo. It's the <laughs> big GG's. But, uh, yeah, just, you know, feel free to tell us a little bit about yourself, like, as a, as a player, like, how you got into Pokemon and uh, competitive Pokemon. So, I have been Pokemon for a lot of my life. I got back into it when I was around 10 or so because it was just really popular around then. Mm -hmm. From that age group as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought it was cool. I loved Oras and XY a lot. And then Sun and Moon came out and I kind of lost interest in Pokemon or as a whole, I guess. Well, not mm -hmm. as a whole, but that game at least because it just never liked Gen 7. Never been a fan of it. Okay. And I used to play this one uh, fan made game named uh, Brick Bronze. I mm -hmm. thought it was really cool. There were so many different ideas that the main series would never get into, right? It was like, it was cool. And so one day when I was playing it, I, um, I, I there was a Coliseum mode. It was kind of like a basically battle stadium but okay. like on a smaller scale because of how many people played it okay i found it fun and i thought it was interesting and one day when i was playing it i stumbled upon um the senior or junior 2017 world's finals being streamed because i used to watch a lot of youtube content oh for yeah that game. yeah and when i found I'm like wow that's really cool people are using gigalith because in my mind Gigalith's a bad Pokemon at the time. <laughs> it is, but yeah. you know, like that's really cool. And then I started to get more and more into it. And I just really enjoyed watching it. I've been playing for about six years now. Mm -hmm. and I, I love everything about it. It's let me have so many cool experiences I would have never had doing anything else. Like I would have never seen myself ever going to Japan. Yeah. I, I just got invited to go there. I got to go see some family. I got to go play the World Championships, which is amazing. Yeah. And that's, like, looking back at it, I could have never seen myself doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's something that I was kind of getting into talking about with Tom, is, like, this, this game has just been able to create so many amazing opportunities and experiences for all of us that, like, I think it's kind of like a come for the game stay for the family type of thing you know what i mean like we all fell in love with playing this game just because i think it's, for some people it's kind of like not like chess but like yes like chess where like you like to think about the strategy of like building your team and trying to beat your opponent and yada yada but like then when you start to really get into it like it really is such like a a, a wonderful community community <laughs> <laughs> to be a part of and uh you know we do we end up getting to do such cool things like like you said going to japan going to charlotte um which there's you know there's some places that are like they're not places that you ever like 
were like, wow, I want to go here, but I still did it, <laughs> you know? And I did it because of Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, like I could have never seen myself going to Knoxville, Tennessee, but here we are. Right, right. But it's cool that you mentioned the thing about the, uh, the, the what's it called? The not hacked games, but, well, well, uh, they, they are technically, right? Games? The, what, what is it? fan game the fan made games or? yeah 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 they they were on just roblox like it was just an idea that was like really expanded upon i see what it you're wasn't saying. like connected to the main series at all right it wasn't, like a rom hack or anything it right. was just built from scratch using like a bunch of assets from the game okay yeah because like when i was um we're, we're a bit of different age ranges right so you said you you were like 10 when Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire came out. I was like, I was either in my senior year of high school or co uh, my first year of college, but it's kind of beside the point. My point is that I was into uh, ROM hacks at that time, and I, there was, I remember there was one called like Floral Sky, where there was like a mega evolution of Dunsparce or something, and I, I thought it was an evolution when I played the game, but when I replayed it, it was like a mega or something, so it was kind of confusing, but, um, you know, we finally have our Dunsparce evolution. Are you guys happy? <laughs> yeah, it really sucks. You know? yeah. one, it, well, one event. One yeah. Event. One of these days, when I finally get a new laptop, I'm going to make I'm gonna make a, uh, a short about how Dunsparce is... Du the Dunsparce is the Jokemon because we we kept asking them for so long. We were like, "Give us a Dunsparce evolution. We need it." And they were like, "Here it is, the Dunsparce." <laughs> Dunsparce, but like a little longer. It's just so it's ridiculous. Like, it's such a just joke. The same way with like like Chonk. Like they just like they were like, "We're gonna have fun this time," you know, like. <laughs> yeah. And I respect that, but yeah, so cool. We we got to hear a little bit about how you got into Pokemon. That's awesome. Tell us a little now just about how this year went because you know I did, you know I I remember I met you at I don't remember which which one I met. What'd you say? It was Orlando. Orlando, okay. And I don't particularly remember how did you do at Orlando. Not well. So okay. What happened with that is that before the event, I was prepping a lot, and so uh, for a little context, I I had played 2019 mm -hmm. and beginning of 2020 before COVID happened. You actually went to some in-person events. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. What What's kind of weird is that so Yokohama was my first Worlds event. I got yeah. to attend. I had qualified before twice. Oh, did you? I could never travel outside Toronto outside of one single event back in 2019 that's awesome yeah so like i wanted to go to orlando because i wanted to go to one event myself just mm -hmm. be like okay it's cool i like it i've done it right and i didn't do that great i i wasn't really good at using palafin i was using palafin parish okay. because palafin was so brand new i just didn't fully grasp how to use it kind of sucks too because i stayed clicked perfectly with me as soon as the event ended <laughs> uh, <laughs> late but like it, it kind of sucked i guess i was playing really good with five pokemon pretty right, much right and then it, it couldn't take me far enough but i know that feeling though Orlando... sorry nothing i just said i know that feeling though yeah after orlando uh one of my friends who I kind of grew up in the game with because he was a junior, I was a senior at the time. Now we're both masters. Right. And he decided to drive down to Knoxville and he invited me to come with him. I was just going to go say like, this is my last event because during that time during COVID and when Worlds happened last year, I was playing competitive Smash because I had just quit Pokemon. Yep, yep. I remember you're also a Smash player. I, I love Smash. It's it's a fun franchise. Mm -hmm. But I was going to Knoxville just to say, my last event, I'm going to have fun. You know, I've never made the drive out to a regional before. Mm -hmm. right? So I did that, and then I ended up doing really well. I made day two. I, you know, got pretty good wins. I went, I only went 7-2 in day one, but I almost went 
one. I think I only lost versus Paul Chua game three because I missed the Hydra bump. I remember correctly. So stuff like that, where it's like, wow, that felt really good. And then I kind of got the itch back to play full time again. Right. And then I ended up going to uh, Fort Wayne. And then I ended up going to Hartford and then Milwaukee. <laughs> and then just kept playing. And now I've already booked a handful of flights for the season and we haven't even gone to Pittsburgh yet. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it has been, I, it has been incredibly cool though to see you, you know, you may not have done super well at, Orlando and and that's something that happens too like you know I talk to really high level players and they'll be like oh like I only went 6-3 poo poo and I'm like hey man like you can't always do well and they like they hate hearing that like they're like they're like I don't I don't care like you know <laughs> I was kind of going through that as well at Hartford I went 6-3 because I just barely barely missed a, a KO with Jet Punch yeah and I just it felt so bad because I was playing really well at the event. I started 5-0. Mm -hmm. And then I pulled Wolf Click using anti palance I had nothing for his team. Yeah. And then I pulled a Dondozo player. Just played very weirdly. And I just could not beat that. Then I, I just... I beat someone in the Palafineer, which was just probably the best set I've ever played. And then I pulled someone using Azumarill and anti palafin and stuff. And I just... I barely missed the the kill on one thing I needed, and then it just kind of crumbled. Did you get CP at that one? I did. Yeah, I got 69th, I think. Oh well, if you if you went 5-0, then yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my <laughs> resistance was super high. Right. Especially because right. Wolf ended up making a uh, two off that. And yeah, and if you yeah you faced Wolf for sure. Yeah. Um, sorry. So which which regional was that? That was at Hartford. Nice, nice. So yeah, you went um, you went kind of okay uh, at Orlando. Definitely could have done better. You went um, we it was Knoxville was the was the one that you got day two first time right? Yeah. That was yeah. Awesome. And I and I remember you were you you didn't have as much faith in yourself as I did. I was I was hyping you up. I was like, you got this. You're doing so well. Like you know um, and. Yeah. And you've been, yeah, you're you're just zooming. So yeah, keep keep, feel free to keep talking about it. Oh, this whole season, like I did make my invite. On paper, my results don't seem that great because I only made a two, two out of six times. Okay. I attended events, which sounds bad, but when I think about it, I do feel a little better because Orlando was my first Masters event at all as well. Like, this right. is my first season as a right. Master. I played right. as a senior. Orlando, it happened whatever I accept that. Yeah. Knoxville, Fort Wayne, I both day two, which I mm -hmm. felt good about. Um, Hartford, I went 6-3. Fortunately, missed that kill. Yeah. And then I just didn't make day two. I still got points. Yeah. And then Milwaukee, it looks like I 2-3 dropped the event. I, so... Round one, I pulled so high. Ended up beating him 2-0, and I okay. felt very, very good. Then, as I was starting my round two, I ended up not feeling that great, and it turns out I had food poisoning. Ooh, yeah, I actually remember that. Yeah, so I just, I tried my hardest to play up the tournament. I was just not in it. People thought I was, like, dying at the tables. <laughs> I just ended up quitting and be like, I gotta take this to myself and just relax a little bit. Right. So, right. that happened, unfortunately. And then I went to NAIC, which I, um, I was using Emilio Forbes' uh, Fresno team. It was mm -hmm. the setup King Gambit one. Yeah. And I was feeling very, very good going into the event. I believe I started as 3-0 or something. So, my only loss to, at the event were just getting pretty unlucky with what I pulled. Mm -hmm. At round four, I pulled on Dozo. And I, I can play into Don Dozo, but it's super stalled on Dozo. And I end up losing game three because I got accuracy dropped by Muddy Water and missed my score. Yeah. <laughs> but then that happened. I'm like, okay, that sucks. I can accept it. But then my other two losses were. Um, Techno Z. What'd you say? Uh, my one of my two losses was uh, Techno Z. 
Oh, we talked to Z, okay. Yeah. And he just, he's a really nice guy, I love Zach. I just, like, it, it's Annihilate versus this team. And Amelia Forbes did beat him in that exact matchup, same bonds and everything. Yeah. At first, no, I just had a lot more experience than I did in it, and just I took a game. I felt good about that, but I just could not break the boss hold. And then, right. And, and, and Annihilate. Right. And then, right. I, right after the round, after that, I believe, I pulled Screens Annihilate. <laughs> I had nothing for that. Like, it was Fire Safety Goggles Annihilate with Screens. And there was nothing I could have done about that. Jeez. And then I went, like, 4-3, and I felt terrible. I was telling my friends, like, yeah, I, I'm not getting my invite anymore. Because even then, I'm still genuinely surprised I got 80th at NAIC. Because, like, yeah, it was 4-3. I assume my resistance was terrible. Yeah. Right? But wasn't because uh, Techno Z ended up making gate two. Right. So ended up playing a balance mirror or two balance mirrors. So the first one, in one I just hard, hard, hard throw. Because I'm just so out of it, I'm like, yeah, I'm not making day two, whatever. And then just beginning of game two, something just clicks and I absolutely roll that guy. <laughs> You're like, I got like, this. Yeah, like games two and three go by really quickly he's like what the hell just happened it was amazing like I, I appreciate it but I could not tell you if I want to <laughs> so then my final round was round 9 I was 5-3 I needed to win that round to get my invite yep end up pulling a King Gambit mirror I think it was the same 5 as Emilio's team but you switched Palafin for Iron Bundle okay you switched Iron Bundle for Palafin right Right. So it's a really, I guess, tight match because we both kind of check each other. And I just get into a position where I made a really hard read. And I end up calling the King Gambit coming in. So I get a flare boost off. Okay. And enough damage to get another one off after Intimidate. Okay. And he just can't come back from that. And I just felt really, really good. And I was excited because I didn't know if I ended up making day two or not. And then. One of my friends, the guy I drove down to Knoxville with, was recording me going to the standings, and I just absolutely popped off when I saw I made world <laughs> because I ended up winning 88, and I just was so happy. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's you should be, you know, you should definitely be proud of it. Um, yeah, it's and and it's it's a good point too, like you know, because you do have to take everything in stride, you have to take everything in perspective. And like, you know, you the the progress is very visible. But like, even um, even Tom said the same thing. Like, when you look at his season on paper, it doesn't look like he had the like craziest like season. Like, oh, I'm just like getting you know top 16 here, here, here. It's like you know he made day two at like one or two events, got a few six threes. He won a um, he won a. Uh, uh, local right but like all that stuff adds up and like you know being able to see the progress from last season or the beginning of the season to the end um is really cool and you know i i felt the same way like i, I one of my biggest faults a lot of the time is that i don't lean enough into other people to like help me think my stuff through so like i build a team that looks really good because i get team building but then, like, I'll, I'll forget to do some of the, like, micro-adjustments that, like, top players make that makes, like, a really big difference between, like, am I going to live this? Or, like, like the little things that, that make a difference between, like, going, like, 7-2 and 6-3, right? But, um, you know, in even though I didn't necessarily have as good of a season, you know, I, I was able to still see that same kind of progress where, like, in Orlando, I went 4-6 or like 3-7 or something. And then in Knoxville, I went 6-3. And then uh, I think every other event since then has been 5-4, which kind of doesn't feel good because it's like missing 6-3 every time. But like, you know, compared to last season, uh, it is real progress. And like, no matter what it might look like on paper, you definitely need to, like, 
you know, be able to see those type of things. And I definitely do see that with your, with your run, you know? Um, so before we get into, before we get into talking about your, like, progress of preparing for Worlds, tell me just a little bit about, like, how you approach playing the game. Like, what's your, what's your, I guess, thought process on, on the game competitively? So, I absolutely love playing Balance. Like, <laughs> Elephant... Arcanine, Amoongus, Swatermain is my team. It is my favorite thing I have ever run. And then you just change the last two depending on what like the format is or right. the meta, blah, blah, blah. It just like it just works so well for me. Like, after Orlando, like I was saying, it just started clicking so well and I just love everything about it because I treat the game as like chess. I'm just trying to get my one important piece in position to like kind of pin you. So right. You get like a, a jet punch and a boom blast or something. So you just can't switch into that. Right. Stuff like that where it's just, it just feels so good to play. And I absolutely love just raw out playing my opponent and having so many opportunities to just make good plays. Right. It's like, that's why I absolutely love playing with like Iron Hands, Palafin or like Rillaboom or like King Gambit or anything else really. I just love the slow bulky defensive pieces that I can kind of play around with and play to force you into position I like. Right, yeah. It's kind of like a mental exercise, you know. It, it, it lets you like exactly. think through like if I if I strategize in this way, how can I force them into, you know, making exactly. me <laughs> like this is unstoppable now. What are you going to do? Like <laughs> Yeah. It makes the game super fun to me. Yeah, yeah. Tell so if you can just tell the people a little bit about like for the players who might not get it as much, like what makes what makes a team like Arcanine, uh Palafin, Amoongus, I, I forget what else he said, but like what makes a team like that so inherently like good naturally feeling? Well, even just in general, not just to me have so many options at your disposal and like for example palafin arcanine moongus really good fire water grass core they cover for each other right. really well palafin's the big damage arcanine's the middle ground support where it does damage but has utility with will of intimidate yep. and moongus keeps both of them alive so a lot of the time back in very early very early regulation c sometimes you just have three people uh people with three pokemon cycling in and out just palafin arcanine moongus palafin arcanine moongus trying to position each other and it led for it went for really really long games sometimes yep but i just it's fun because i just enjoy outplaying my opponent or making a really good educated read right yep. it's like yeah realistically if you want to get out of this position best play you can make switch in the arc nine over the amoongus for example so i wave crash the amoongus slot it's <laughs> right 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 it just it's, i just like doing that it feels really good especially with a balanced team where I don't like playing Tailwind, I think it's lame. I'm not into that offensive, aggressive play style. Right. I like having my Iron Hand slower than things. I can, okay, I'm slower than you. I'm going to protect my other slot, full switch out for a free switch, make sure I soak up some damage. Right, right. And I get to bring in my offensive piece and put you in enough, put on enough pressure to put you in an awkward position. I have maybe my Arcanine and Moongus in the back where I can switch it on the other slot adjust while I'm also putting off the pressure so I can come back later on and finish out the game. Right. So that very like kind of like slow tactical type of way of thinking about it. Exactly. And right. I was talking about me playing competitive Smash earlier. It's kind of translates over as well. I love a lot of slow like kind of campy zoner characters. I just love thinking and having to outplay my opponent a lot of the time. I play like a harder kick, like uh, Captain Olimar from Pikmin. Right. I can. I, he's really hard. I have to make sure I have so. I'm keeping track of so many things all the time. Right. Right. And I find that really enjoyable because when you win, it feels really deserved because of how difficult a character can be. It's kind of the same with Pokemon. It's like I just outplayed you with balance. I feel really good. Yes. You need to outplay somebody with balance to win. Yeah, technically, like, while slow, bulky teams can look not as good at face value because when people look at 
fast teams, they're like, oh, I need to respect this fast team. But like, when you get to a higher level of play, you start seeing people shift towards these more bulky teams because it's like, you know, it's not just about being hyper aggressive. It's about knowing that I can live what you're going to do and then dishing out a crucial amount of damage back in order to, you know, guarantee that I can outpace you kind of. And so, yeah, that, that, that level of kind of shifting towards bulky aggression is something that you see in high level players because it's not just about like bam 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 it is a lot more about that board state and the positioning and you know some players uh i think when they first get into it they kind of see long games as like oh like do we have to do that but like it's something that a high level player takes i think pride at being able to be good at is like sitting there through like 20 turns where like like if i didn't make every single one of these switches i wouldn't have been maintaining the board state not to let it snowball and so like you constantly fight for all these turns just for this one moment where you're like okay like we got through all that and right now i can see that if i do this we're in here like and it's a really good feeling and uh and it also like it brings up what you were saying about Arcanine Amoongus and Palafin where like the the thing that's really good about all of them together is that they kind of function in the three different main ways that you see a lot of Pokemon functioning. I mean there's bulky offense but if we kind of throw bulky offense to the side there's like hyper offense which is like I mean, Palafin kind of is bulky offense, but we'll call it hyper offense, right? There's, like, Pokemon that are just here to uh, be, like, putting in big damage, right? And then there's Pokemon that are kind of middle ground, which, uh, like, Arcanine, like, they're really good at providing some support, but they also will get those crucial KOs if you need them to. And then there's those Pokemon that, like, Amoongus... I mean, sure, like, if a Pokemon's at, like, 3% health, it can take it out with Clear Smog, but it really excels just at being able to either take the pressure off your other Pokemon so that they can do what they want to do, or increasing the longevity of your other Pokemon. So, like, it's it really does speak to, like, having all of those types of Pokemon available to you increases the 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 diversity of ways that you can play and like keep yourself still in the game without coming into matchups where it's just like i don't, I don't know what i was gonna do <laughs> yeah that's that's enough of my i i didn't ramble at all there because i think everything i said was very well said but it was still a little bit of a ramble but get, getting back to what you were saying just tell us a little bit about um actually preparing for worlds like you know putting together your team and whatever whatever so preparing for worlds this was so for a little context i have a really good building group and one of them had done really really well at an event they had mm -hmm. already gotten their invite yeah while i was still trying to get my naic so they were testing a handful of things as soon as regulation d got announced and right after NAIC, I was trying a little bit of it out. We didn't really get anywhere with it. We thought it was a cool idea, but through that, we ended up finding the idea we used for Worlds. I ended up using Zapdos Kanto. Okay. And it was, it was cool. I liked it. Like, we ended up going with Zapdos, Rillaboom, Shenpao, or Shifu Water, Fluttermane. Okay. And That's an extremely strong team. Yeah, so it was really, really good. And, uh, Landorus, sorry. But it felt really, really good. And it was just kind of weird. Because a lot of the teams going to Worlds, like Iron Hands and Moongus, and then Hyper Offense, pretty much. Yeah. Or, uh, like, Double Genie, Old Dango, Tailwind kind of stuff. Yeah. It felt kind of weird going into it. I don't... I didn't have the best run, unfortunately, because... But the team did really, really well. It kind of countered the meta teams pretty well. Mm -hmm. Kind of fumbled against off-meta type things. Right. So, right. 
going over my run, round one, I end up fighting a Cinderace player for <laughs> some reason. I don't, still don't understand why they were running that, but I, the set was over in four turns. Which, I just, with you winning. Yeah, I yeah. just called their switch into Gyarados, round one, with a Thunderbolt. Then game two, I just read their Terra Water and Goldengo. And just doubled up the stomping tantrum from Landers and then a Thunderbolt and it just died. Right. That right. was really good. Round two, I ended up fighting Billa. And Billa had this insane team. I was obviously not prepared for it at all. Like, With the, the Breloom, was it Roaring Moon yeah. as well? Yeah, it was like AV, Terra Electric, Terra Blast, Chen Pao. Yeah. Next to Roaring Moon, Banded Arcanine, Hisui. Uh, Sash Breloom. Yeah. And uh, two others I can't remember. Yeah. It's just, it's so, so good. And I just, I had like nothing for it. Terra Electric, Terra Blast Gen Pow is so specific. It feels like it was built to beat my team and nothing else. I doubt <laughs> that's the case. It's just, it's just so good versus me because I just couldn't do much versus that plus Roaring Moon. Right. right? And I felt powerless. So I'm like, I just took a loss. It's all right. Um, I was one one. I end up pulling uh, Rakes in round three. Yeah, uh, it's a very good Spanish player. Okay. He's running um, Ellen offense, pretty much. Yeah. And the game one, I was, I was kind of on the back for a little bit, but I was, I made a good play, and I was like, probably in the driver's seat most scenarios. This rule boom ends up outspeeding my Zapdos. Zapdos is 131 speed. Had it Terra watered earlier in the game, like, oh, this is okay. He can't Terra anymore. I'm going to Hurricane. It's going to yeah. kill. It'll yeah. be fine. And then it ends up killing me. I end up getting Snowball off of that. I was just so surprised. I'm pretty sure all of his Pokemon were basically Max Max. <laughs> just, yeah, time. Max speed. Like, I think it was Max Max Adamant Rillaboom. I'm like, what? It was weird. That's wild. So that happened, and then game two, I just I was so surprised, and I just did not play that second game well at all, and obviously ended up losing that one. Okay. And okay. then my last round, I did lose again. I ended up pulling a friend, uh, Tiki Chase. Okay, yeah, I know Tiki Chase. I love Chase, really nice guy. He ends up having King Gambit, which is another really weird matchup for my team, because I can't really stop that from setting up. Yeah, Aside people of, weren't um, using it as much, so it's kind of like when you see it, it's like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like my only way to stop it from setting up, other than like close combating with Rashifu or Sacred Sorting, yeah. is to taunt it. And taunt is on my Landers, <laughs> which is boosting up the King Gambit. Yeah. So you see my problem. Right, right. I end up taking to a game three, because we went back and forth, and then game three, I called the adaptation. I just didn't think he would make it, so I second-guessed myself, uh. let it, and I just got curb stomped. Mm. I'm, I'm happy I went out to a friend rather than some random person I don't know. So, it's all good. It's just unfortunately, I didn't really have the best of runs. I kind of wish I pulled standard stuff too, because <laughs> I do think my run could have gone very different if yeah. I did. I don't want to blame anything at all, it just would have been interesting if I saw it. For sure. So, so you ended up dropping after the after the one three. Yeah, there wasn't really any point of going going on anymore and just playing. So yeah. I just decided to drop, have a good time in Japan after that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's it's the the like the level of players that you get to play at Worlds is like not only is it such a good experience. Like me and Tom talked about it a little bit, but like Pokemon is a lot like. Uh, skateboarding where you get better by being around really good players and people mm -hmm. who you may have at a time considered to be a lot better than you right so you know by by getting to play these type of people is just an amazing opportunity so like either either way like even if you don't do good at worlds it's like it's worlds like there's everyone there is an amazing player and you know you 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 grow so much from the experience not to mention just the fact that it in itself is an amazing experience to have gained 
right? Um, but yeah, you know, it's, 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 I think it's, I think it's very common that people's worlds run will end up being not as good as some of their regionals runs just because of the caliber of player there, you know? And even then, there were some really weird upsets, like Edu went 1-3 this year. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm like, I'm okay with going 1-3, obviously, I want a day two, I know I can do better. Yeah. But this is something I have touched on in the past with other people, and I have a very hard time playing the game because I have ADHD. And that causes me to have a very hard time to focus. Right. And kind of think, I guess. Right. It's like, I can talk and kind of say my ideas out loud, but they don't really translate the same way if I'm keeping it to myself. Right? So it can feel very hard some days to just play the game, period. Obviously, everybody is off days, but my case is a little different. Right. Right? So I do kind of have that little chip on my shoulder. I have to deal with at events like regionals locals anywhere really yeah yeah because in person events it, it's like the effect is increased even more so you kind of have to like yeah on top of that like i can't talk to myself right because i'd just be giving information to my right. opponent that so i kind of need to try and think about it and it's just, it's difficult it's, it's kind of a hard thing to talk about because not a lot of people understand it right but it is a very real thing, and I'm kind of happy I've come this far at dealing with it because I was able to qualify with qualify four worlds while dealing with this type of thing. And right. It's no, it's no excuse at all. I just think it's interesting where it's like imagine a world where this doesn't exist, right? Right. How far would I be going? I want to try and hit that anyways, even with it, because I want to be able to say like, yeah, I'm just that good at the game <laughs> right you know what i mean right and i want to be able to, to go far and play well because i i'm able to take on like some of the best players in the world just my problem is i'm not always in that i don't have that ability 24 7 yeah right? and i want to be able to consistently be at that so i usually rely on energy drinks or something <laughs> and it, it's hard but sometimes it has its perks as weird as that is like yeah. something called hyper focus it's like you are so locked in hyper fixation yeah. person. like i am playing my uh, opponent like tenfold right i love that it just doesn't happen too often can't really control what i have but it's right. cool right and i mean either way like you know even if even if you could say like I don't feel like I'm there yet in some ways because of this or that. You know, it, it does take time. So even with even with those things, you know, you still might be able to reach that level uh, with all those things in consideration. And it does take time. You know, I think whenever I whenever I think about regionals and things, I always have to remind myself when I'm looking at players like Wolfie or I don't know, but like you know, they've been doing this for 12 plus years you know whereas this is like my first year going to in-person well last year but um you know this is my second season going to in-person events and like it really does take time to develop that like uh second nature thought process about things where like yes some people develop it quicker just because they they kind of like we've been talking about like they really like thinking about the str the strategy of the game so like some people can reach decent levels within four or five years but like imagine yourself after 12 years you know there's no reason to say that you couldn't be just as good even with you know all the like adhd type stuff considered but and and i also think you know it's it's not what what am i trying to say like it's not worth saying that things like that um don't get well no it is worth saying that sometimes people don't understand things like that but the point is to say that it should be taken more naturally and that people should understand that things like that actually do um you know it's actually it's a real world consideration that you have to take into into factor when you think about you know playing the game like we uh, we have mental states that 
you know, affect the way that we think about the game. Some people are, uh, you know, some players, you know, they're like constantly, you know, don't want to talk to their opponents at all, you know, this and that. And some players, you know, they, they just sit down and they, they just want to chit chat, chit chat, but like have to like constantly remind themselves not to like shout things out that would like make them lose. And, you know, it's f anyone who wants to put the psychological aspect of things to the side is, is, uh, disregarding real life in some way, you know, like it's, it's, it's all a real aspect of things. And, you know, me personally, like, you know, I've just been a little bit depressed this year, more or less. And, you know, that has not really affected my gameplay, but like, it's affected, I think, the way that I act sometimes at events. And, you know, it's more something that I just like reflect on in my head. But like, uh, you know, I think when I think about what I need to do, actually, like, for some people, their mental states does, in in ways, inform them of how they need to, uh, you know, improve as a player. You know, for yeah. that side of me, it has nothing to do with how I need to improve as a player. Like, when I look at my regionals runs, what I really see as the way that I need to improve is I need to start leaning into other people more. Because, you know, I... I just, I end up building my teams on my own and like not talking to anyone about calcs or what if I used this, what are, what if I used that. And like to see myself get to the point where I can consistently go 5-4 and sometimes go 6-3 uh, is, has been a really good feeling. But I know kind of like you're saying, like if I kind of push past some of those barriers that in my case, I'm kind of putting on myself, like... Mm. I can get to that point where, like, I know I could be someone who's getting day two and where, like, you know, then, like, other players actually do want to, like, help me because they see that I can get to that point where, like, that's, that's kind of one of the things where, like, sometimes you have to get there to get the recognition that people help you get there, but you also need to be not afraid to reach out to people. And, like, that's something that I have at times neglected that has ultimately i think in in my case determined how my season went for this year you know but uh that's enough rambling about that again we're just we're just making good points you know and and rambling but we're getting back to it you know we talked about your uh we talked about your actual world's run we talked about your uh i guess process of preparing for worlds which also goes back to the idea of uh you know this is a team effort right and and ultimately you get there by talking to your friends and you know you you leaned on your friends to help build a core and you know like think through some of it and you know it's it is a good thing for people to keep in mind you know but yeah so we talked about uh your world's building process we talked about worlds itself Tell us a little bit more about just uh, how Japan was. How was your trip? Japan was absolutely amazing. So even before I got there, I uh, was taking a two-week trip. My first week, I ended up going to L.A. to go see my girlfriend. It was fantastic. Right. It gave me a really good, I guess, mental boost going into Worlds. Yeah. Whatever happened, happened. I had a good time, right? Yeah. And off that, already a good start to the trip and again to Japan and I actually went to go see family because I have some family in Osaka oh okay yeah and they end up coming down to the southern part of Yokohama where I was staying with them for about two days yeah and then off that I ended up walking to the northern part which is a terrible idea in retrospect because of how hot it was <laughs> I was lugging around a suitcase for about an hour and a half but yeah after that I ended up going to meet up with people in northern Yokohama where Worlds was. It was just such a great experience. There was so many just, it's so different from North America as a whole. Uh -huh. In a really nice way, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Getting yeah. to experience that clash of cultures really like it opens your mind up um, to, yeah. to just seeing like the different ways that people live around the world because like, um, I mean, you're from Canada so you don't experience it as much as in America but like 
are so right there right there that's the problem right like you know you're literally in america uh but you know the united states is a, is is extremely egotistical about itself in the sense that like a lot of the people who don't recognize that they're small-minded in america uh in the united states is that they they think the way that we live in the united states is the way like we're the best ever like and you you go to other places and you see like these people have such a nice culture and like the way that they like take care of their cities and like and a lot of these are like places that like if you talk to really ignorant americans they're like oh yeah like why would i ever go here like like people there are like stupid blah blah blah. and it's like no like you don't know shit like you you know nothing about the world outside of your small town minds like like (laughs) i don't need to get into that too much sorry i'm i'm starting to you know ramble about the problems of the united states because it's effed uh, <laughs> That's just American. Right. But, but no, like, Japan... Oh, so many people were talking about, like, how clean it is and, and, and how, like, nice it was, like, how safe it is. And I know there's a lot of people from the United States who that was probably their first time getting to experience, like, that culture shock of getting out of America and being like, wow, it could just be like this instead of whatever the hell we're dealing with. Like... <laughs> When I was in Japan, everything was so clean. Everybody was so respectful. Yeah. It kind of. So I'm from Toronto. Yeah. It felt pretty much like Toronto, but very, very organized. Yeah, yeah. Way, it was like everybody's super respectful. We are here as well, but like on a different, in a different way. I it's think. a little different. But, yeah, yeah. It's hard yeah. to explain until you experience it. Definitely. Yeah. And like the food, like the people, the places, everything there is just so different and similar at the same time it was really nice to just be there for about a week kind of mm-hmm. wish i could stay longer but it was really nice to experience and just see i guess the world around me because i'm literally on the other side of the, the world right mm-hmm. and it's just so interesting their day-to-day right because everybody is like in dress pants dress shirts right Right now, I'm just in, like, a regular t-shirt and shorts, <laughs> right? So I'm relaxing, right? Right. Like, nobody really knows that, right? I'm literally, so, like, like, wearing a blanket. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, that's not really a thing there, at least from what I saw, right? Yeah, they... So, they, like, they, they It's really interesting. It's a bit more of a professional society to some degree. Yeah. Yeah, they, they uphold themselves a little better than we do. They do. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess, is there anything else you want to say about the Japan trip? Um, absolutely love getting to meet some people I've never met before, both because they're from different countries, or I know them online, haven't really talked to them in person before. Like, I got to meet John Zhu. Yeah, yeah. I uh, love that guy. I got to meet, uh, Casey, if you know who that is. Really nice. I think so. Um, uh, Evadov. Okay love him you know like just a handful of people i've never met before right absolutely love talking to them right yeah and would love to just see them again at an international if they ever come out to that or maybe worlds if they ever go to i guess hawaii this year stuff like that right yeah and and yeah it goes back to what we were talking about right like this really it becomes so much about not just the game but the friends that you make along the way and the experiences and the opportunities that it creates right Exactly. Yeah. Um, FYI for people, which I mean, I should have said this earlier, but when I'm like looking up at nothing, I'm just like thinking. So, you know, if if they need to know that, <laughs> I'm the, I'm just like when I'm like up looking like this, I'm just listening to what Olivia is saying, basically. But uh, is there anybody that you want to, I guess, give any like shout outs or anything, you know, final words that you want to say before we start? Uh, wrapping things up? Uh, first off, uh, Small of Garden. I absolutely love you guys. Ryan, Jeremy, Brian, Charlie. You guys are amazing. I definitely would not be at Worlds this year without you guys, or even probably just playing Pokemon still, period, without talking to you guys. Um, big shout out to Team Canada. You guys are always super supportive. And that's really it. Anybody else that I mentioned? <laughs> I come to mind instantly, but you all are just 
amazing. I really appreciate all the support I get all the time. Right. It makes me feel really excited to just keep playing, you know what I mean? Get to see yeah. these people, meet them, just talk to them, really. Yeah. I, yeah. Like you were saying, I love just talking to people, right? Sometimes not even about the game. It's just like, here, if I get my invite before the end of the season, yeah, I'm probably going to just keep going to events, just see people, right? Right. But I just, I, I love getting to travel somewhere just to hang out with people for like a weekend, right? Yeah. It's a I great community. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great community. We respect you as a player. And, you know, I think one of the things that one of the things that's so nice about doing things like going to or being a part of the Pokemon community is that like it allows you to kind of express yourself, you know, and like it, it just reminds me of uh, it reminds me of like when I moved from like college to San Francisco, you know, it's like when you when you have an extended amount of times or amounts of time because in this case it's like weekend segments over and over again right but like when you have a chance to like kind of get out of your normal sphere of like people that you're always around and who expect you to be this way or that way all the time like it allows you to have the chance to really like discover who you are outside of uh outside of all that like normal hometown stuff that you've grown up with your whole life and you know whatever whatever so like uh regionals and and being a part of the pokemon community uh to me is a lot like you know when i moved to san francisco where it's like okay i don't need to think about all that dumb stuff about like all the way everyone saw me throughout my life i'm just me who do i want to be who am i you know and you just get to be that person and you know you if you do well enough you don't bring your old baggage with you right <laughs> yeah 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 so it's it's great you know and i'm i'm glad that you've been able to to make the experience you have out of it and i i do view you as a very respectable player so i i hope you you know view yourself as that as well you know i've been told that by a handful of people and i do really appreciate that and in a way, I kind of want to just help people back. Like, I wouldn't be here without a lot of people, right? So yeah. the best I can do is give back. Like, I, I do Pokemon coaching. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the best player out there. I, I will admit that. Yeah. But it's That's not great. even just like, oh, I want to coach because I'm better than everybody else. No, I just, I want to give back to people. I like helping yeah. players learn how to play the game because I just, I love teaching. It's literally my yeah. job, right? Right, right. I just, I just yeah. I just, I love it. So, yeah. so I can never help people like, learn something I absolutely would and that's why I started all that and it's been very successful recently which I'm very happy about because I've seen a lot of people start to go places because I've put in the effort I've gotten to sit down with them for hours on end now and they've gotten they've gotten to hit their personal goals and now for right. the new season a lot of them are going to start playing for their invite possibly. right yeah, and you guys should definitely consider, you know, hitting Olivia up for some coaching, you know. Olivia is is a is a great player and you know, it's it's just so great to be able to pick people's brains and to be able to bounce ideas off people and you know, it's uh it's just nice to be able to support one another, but also like I I think the the point that you made is really so worth um just just highlighting that like that people should understand like the like the real reason why we do a lot of what we do is that we want to be able to give back to the community right so like it's 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 such a good feeling to like to sure just be a part of the community but to actually like to be able to contribute to it and to feel like you're like a positive asset of the community that you can give back to it um it is it's a really good feeling it is it is yeah so thank you olivia uh if you have any parting words feel free to say but besides that you know i think we'll we'll prepare to wrap it up it's been a good it's been a good hour it's been a pleasure it has yeah. well i didn't say anything just be nice to each other have a good time and just play pokemon 
Yep, yep, big chillin', big chillin'. Alright, well, yeah, have a good one. Uh, and have a good one to you, the watchers. <laughs> yeah, peace out, y'all.